Yeah. Uh, talk about going from the outhouse to the penthouse. Tavita Pangai, mm. he will leave the Broncos. The Penrith Panthers have picked him up for the rest of the season. And now this is just off the back of uh, announcing that he will be a Bulldog as of next year. This has been a really swift trade. Now, Tavita Pangai is actually suspended at the moment for a crusher tackle, so he won't play really until round 2021 20, when he will be a Penrith mm. Panther. How did this go down and what is he worth for the rest of the year? Well, I mean, it went down because Penrith, he's obviously going to the Bulldogs next year. Brisbane were happy for him to go now. The Bulldogs don't want him straight away because they want to save that money and, and use it in other, in other ways. So suddenly Tavita Pango's on the market for a club this year. James Fisher-Harris's partner's or wife, I think, or partner's pregnant. He's got to leave the bubble for a while. And Tavita's obviously available and they were able to agree financial terms to make it happen. Um, the big issue now is he, he won't start with them until, I think, August 1. So he'll play, I think, August 2. They'll play the Roosters, their first game that he's available for. Mm. Um, Tavita's contract with the, the Panthers doesn't kick into August 1. He terminates his deal with Brisbane. He's got to find somewhere to... Well, his deal's not terminated, but they'll pay him to the end of the month. But I'm not sure that they necessarily want him around the playing group and so on. So they've got to work out, work out somewhere he can train, somewhere he can be uh, keep fit. Penrith the next got to work 10 that days, out. Penrith have got to work that out. The NRL's got to work that out. But it's a huge signing for Penrith. I mean, on his day, he is a match winner to yeah. be the Pangai. And the flip side is it's actually going to work out as a salary cap saving for the Broncos in next year's salary cap. So are the Broncos Which already looking towards next year? Well, the Broncos can't make the finals this year. So what they it's quite clever what they've done by letting him go now. And let's, for argument's sake, just say Penrith are paying him $100,000. To play the rest of this season, that hundred thousand dollars comes off Brisbane's salary cap next year. Yep. So that gives the Broncos an extra hundred thousand dollars in their next year's cap, which can be the difference sometimes between landing a player and not landing a player. We all know they're in the race with Dane Gagai. Mm -hmm. They've got they're looking at a couple other players as well. Uh, they've got money to you know that's going to be available because Milford's also going, which is going to free up the best part of a million bucks in the cap as well. So they're looking to get back in the market. So. Given the fact they're not making the finals this year, that he's going to Canterbury next year, why not let him go now? As a Broncos now? fan, that's so disappointing to just see them wave the white flag. They're not, it's, it's business for It's I not know. white flag. They, I know, but how can you just cheer for the someone all year and then go, well, we're not going to make it, off you go. Well, people only cheer for a piece of cloth anyway. I don't think that passes the pub test, to be honest, for fans. If they've signed up, they've bought their membership, and then they think, oh, well, the Broncos aren't picking the people who won't be here next year You don't anyway. think there's some, some confidence or there's some, there's some happiness about the fact that, OK, he's gone this year, but we're not making the finals anyway, but this is going to give us money in the next year's That's what the off-season is. Just, I don't fair know. fair argument. I don't know. It just, I, I feel like as fans, I'd be disappointed just to see someone pop up just as a gun for hire. What about Penrith? Like, yeah, where do they, they are sit? The, they are the absolute winners in all of this, Penrith. Well, that, to win a competition, they didn't need... To Vita Pengai Jr. But you think about his history at the Brisbane Broncos. For me, he's he's a follower. He's not a leader. He's got a big voice at the Brisbane Broncos and he gets away with you know, a few things. At Penrith, he's going to be overwhelmed by Nathan Cleary, Fisher, Harris, Isaiah Yo, and this guy is going to take an impact at the finals and he's going to play a big role in Penrith trying to do what they want to do. And he's a great insurance scheme. Absolutely. He sits there and <laughs> if Fisher Harris goes and has the the, uh, the, the baby, well, his wife has the baby and he's obviously going to free up a spot there. But even when it, once he comes back... Well, I think it's better for, like, kick out. You think about his brilliance. Mm. He's struggling to do it over 80 minutes. Bring him off, put Tavita on for 20, 25 minutes, then put kick out back on. You've got a hell of a combination Tavita there. does those big minutes. Absolutely. He does those big he's carries. The at the he's the um, competition's leading offloader as yep. well. He averages about three a game or more. Um, he brings so much to the game. And I think he is destructive. He's a little bit controversial. But it, it just looks like the rich robbing from the poor. Ronnie, look, there's no doubt when the NRL changed the deadline to sign players from June 30, which it's been for many, many years, for decades, in fact, and last year we had a corrupted system because we had the, the uh, COVID interruption. Yeah. This year they didn't change it back. They kept it at August 1. And what it's done is it's allowed teams like Penrith, which they've done specifically here, is to target shoot mm. and just sit down and say, right, this guy's available. We've got, we've got enough money left in our cap that we haven't spent... Why not just get him in? What, like, 
to Cooper's yep. point, he just comes in as a troubleshooter. Boom. Absolutely. Off he goes. I'm with you uh, from a Broncos perspective, on he's a Broncos fan, <laughs> to see him go. So you're the other one. Okay. There's only two but of us. I would, say, I would say that if, <laughs> it get, if, it, if it gets some Dane Gagai down next year, then it's a really smart piece of business by Brisbane. If it gets them a better player next year, or a player that better, better fits the roster they're, they're tr trying to build, it's a really smart move by the Broncos. So if the Broncos, let's say, for example, the Broncos right now have got 200000 left in their cap next year. They're, that's not going to get you a high quality NRL first grade of two hundred thousand dollars. But suddenly if he frees up 100, 150, yeah. there's three fifty. That's a different brand. Then then, then yeah. there's a little bit of money with Milford because they're not going to pay a million dollars for whoever they get. There's another couple of hundred out of the Milford money. So suddenly they go from having two hundred thousand dollars in the cap, get rid of this guy. No, but They've Milford's got four, different. five hundred thousand. Milford's Milford's different. Yeah, but what I'm saying by what that does, that gives them about four, five hundred in the next year's cap. Yeah. Now that means they can get a serious player at the club next season. Yeah. And, and if you're going to, that's a long-term decision they're making. Let's let's think long-term yeah. about the long-term building of the club. And, and to Reedy's point, get a gay guy in or someone like that, who's a a, a rep standard player. If that means letting him go for the last five games of the year. Yeah. Why not? I know, I just feel like the buzzards are hovering and we're trying to shoo them away <laughs> the from Bron the Broncos' carcass. If the Broncos can reset their list for next year, I think that's way more important than winning next week's game. Yeah. Well, the Bulldogs, they have done an amazing deal with Pangai as well and, of course, that boosts their roster enormously. They are... I mean, this is their predicted team for 2021 and it has... The quality in this side has skyrocketed. The Bulldogs' oh. stocks have gone through the roof. There's still a couple of voids there, though. I, mean, I still think they need number nine, nine, and they're certainly circling Brandon Smith and have been for a long time now. I don't think they'll get him next year, but obviously they're pretty confident they'll get him the year after. Um, and, you know, halfback's a problem for them. I think you have or Kyle, depending on what happens with Kyle Flanagan, maybe Kyle Flanagan's a seven, but it's a much better team than they've got now. There's no doubt about that. Um, they've made some smart signings.